Well, it's a cool and perfect day for football between Central Michigan and number nine, Notre Dame. For more on today's game, let's head down to the field. The third member of our team in Zora Stevenson. Thanks, Jack. Marcus Freeman has stressed to his team the need to operate with a sense of urgency. After losing to Marshall last season, he learned to always respect the process. Freeman told me there is no overlooking opponents. He says each week his only focus is to get his group to play at its full potential. As for the Central Michigan Chippewas, the quarterback competition continues. With Bert Emanuel Jr. sicking out today, Jace Bauer now gets his shot. Bauer found out he was going to start on Wednesday, but the team chose to keep it under wraps. This is Bauer's first start this season and second overall. Now the team continues to reiterate it has yet to pick an official QB1 for this season. Here we go. So Spencer Schrader sent us into this Saturday afternoon and a dangerous return man is back for Central Michigan and Marian Lukes. Very talented at an 86-yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week against New Hampshire. Always dangerous in the return game. Michigan and Notre Dame, here we go. So our first look at Jace Bauer, we believe, and it will be Jace Bauer making the start. Burt Emanuel, their star quarterback, is out. Offensive player of the week in the back conference last week. Two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, over 100 yards on the ground in that win over New Hampshire. Fully expected to see him. Instead, it will be Jace Bauer, good running quarterback as well. 100 yards at back-to-back -back games, top quarterback in the class in his class coming out of Iowa, so some good stuff to him as well. Tough test for him, though, this afternoon. It sure is. Something's jumped out over the first couple weeks as the quarterback design runs with Bert Emanuel. It fits right into Jace Bauer's skill set as well. We'll see a lot today. He's looking for his running back, and that is Miles Bailey, and that is complete. Bailey's going to break a tackle and take it out across the 30. That's Thomas Harper, the tackle that he broke. Anticipate seeing a lot of quarterback movement as well for Central Michigan. They don't match up well versus this Irish defensive front. They don't want to keep the quarterback in the pocket as a sitting duck. We saw the movement on down one. We're going to see a lot of that throughout the ball game. It's a two running back set for Central Michigan. Marion Luke checks in as well as Miles Bailey. Fake it to him. Quarterback keeper and nowhere to go. It's Jordan Patello making the tackle along with Jack Kaiser. The honor roll, how do you see it? The Chippewas get Powell Woods back at right guard. He's their best lineman. Chris Parker's their playmaker outside. Howard Cross playing as well as anybody on that defensive front. And Maris Leofal, this guy has been everywhere for the Irish so far. Got a third and short here. It's a big down for Central Michigan. And Notre Dame concerned with J.D. Bertrand being out. D.J. Brown banged up as well. Some lead communicators on that defense. So it shows up on this third down and two. Pressure look. Pressure columns off the edge. That's going to make the stop in the backfield. It's Benjamin Morrison on the corner blitz and making the play for Notre Dame. Al Golden, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, is not afraid to dial up some pressures. And you said it's Benjamin Morrison off the right side. He goes unblocked. The penetration initially kills the run. Howard Cross, this guy seems to be everywhere. Tackle for loss. It's a big down for Central Michigan. If you can somehow avoid a three and out to start the game on the road, it just, it's critical. Didn't get it done there. Irish get their first opportunity coming back the other way. This Tyree from the 10, and he is stopped up right there at that spot. So Notre Dame, a new face of the franchise. He has become that quickly. Talking about Sam Hartman, introduction could not have been better. 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Notre Dame fans have been waiting, looking for a quarterback like this guy. Go to that transfer portal, bring him in from Wake Forest. Been pretty darn good. Jack, well documented. 
48 starts coming into the season here at Wake Forest, and you see that in his play. He's so poised, he's so composed, and like we talked about in the pregame, he has such a command of this offense. He looks completely comfortable running this Irish offense three games into the season. On the first play, he'll pitch it out to Audric Estime. Takes about 50% of these carries for the Irish. And a nice pickup on the first offensive play for Notre Dame. Jared Park is the offensive coordinator for Notre Dame and pretty clear that he wants to run the football. And the guy he wants to run the football with is that man right there, Audric Estime, 230 pounds, big, strong runner. And they do it a lot of different ways. A pitch on that play, they like gap runs where they pull linemen. The common denominator is get the ball to number seven. Second and two, bring Tobias Merriweather in motion, fake it to him, give the football right back to Estime. He goes up and over to pick up that first down. The development of Audric Estime here over the last couple of years has been pretty obvious. He's the go-to guy for the Irish Holden stays. We talked about him in the pregame. He's going to get the start today. Three touchdowns over the last couple weeks. Bristol, the defensive tackle for Central Michigan, is their best player on defense. And Kyle Moretti is their leader at middle linebacker. A little added responsibility for Holden stays in the blocking game as well as Cooper Flanagan with Mitchell Evans out injured. Hand it off one more time. Estebe right up the middle, lower in that shoulder. He's doing what he does best. Mr. Ricard eventually got him on the ground. In fact, the common theme for Parker in this offense, when they've gone against Navy, against Tennessee State, and now Central Michigan, teams that Notre Dame is, is flat out better than, hey, we're going to run the ball at the start of this game. We're going we're gonna to dominate the line of scrimmage. We're going to get the ball to Audric Estime and the stable of backs that we have. No different today. Jeremiah Love checks into the game at running back. Hartman looking deep once all and has his receiver in total. Run it, run it, run it again, and then when you throw it, go get him. This is Tobias Merriweather. He's working on Dante Kent, the best corner for Central Michigan, but he's a gambler. Kent gets caught peeking inside, reacts to the inside route. That's Tobias Mer Merriweather, run right past him. That's what Merriweather does best. Go get the deep ball. Big play for the Irish. About four plays, 91 yards, and the touchdown. Spencer Schrader. Now for the extra point, and that is good. Hard to start any better than that. 7 nothing. They've been looking to get Merriweather the football. That's the perfect way to do it. Touchdown. Irish. They, they call that a walk it to him, Jack. Just walk it out there to him. So Dom Toretto and his crew are back, and this time they face their deadliest foe. Experience one of this year's biggest movies with Fast X, streaming now exclusively on Peacock. How about that start? Can't throw it any better. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> you got the feeling yesterday talking to Jared Parker that they wanted to take some shots in this game. Didn't know how early those shots may come. A few plays in. Central Michigan plays a lot of single high man-to-man -man coverage, meaning the outside receivers are isolated on those corners and Notre Dame wanted to take advantage of. They didn't waste a lot of time doing it. And Spencer Schrader tried to sneak it into the end zone. Instead, it hopped out right there just about the one-yard line, and the penalty markers will fly. First down at the 35-yard line. Let's take another look here at the touchdown, Jack. Watch this here. This is Holden stays inside. He's going to run an out route. Merriweather's outside. He's going to run the go route. And watch Dante Kent, the corner for Central Michigan. He's a very aggressive player, and he's trying to make a play on the inside receiver, and he lets Tobias Merriweather go right past him. He has no safety help over the top. He got a little greedy, not disciplined. Sam Hartman, this Irish offense, took advantage of it. The longest career reception for Merriweather at 75 yards. His head coach has been trying to get him involved, and you see him celebrating with the youngster over on the sideline. 
Seven zip. Back onto the field comes Jace Bauer. Miles Bailey just behind him, giving the football, and can he gain the edge? Able to for a pickup of about four. That's Jack Kaiser who escorted him toward the boundary. Jack, one of the big questions for Notre Dame on defense today is their middle linebacker, J.D. Bertrand, is out. So Marcus Freeman, Al Goldman, all these guys talked about the importance of Kaiser and Leah Fowl and Drake Bowen and Jalen Steed, the other linebackers stepping up in Bertrand's absence, not only in production, but in leadership, getting everybody on the same page. Getting five on the first down carry, second and five. And back to this pistol look. It's one of the favorites with Central Michigan offense. Bow to pass. Firing downfield, and this just over the head of Cam Hart. And that football is caught by Tyson Davis. Beautiful throw on that one. It sure was. The penalty markers fly back there where Bauer let go of the football. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 40. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the play. First down. So Joshua Burnham. Jack, we just talked about how central, what a catch. Look at it. Oh, oh uh, just rolled out. Yep. I, I think that ball's out. That ball is going to come back out. And there's the roughing. Burnham hits him late. So this play clearly will go under review, and now you hear the whistles. They're going to take another look at it. Marcus Freeman saying, come on, that's pretty clear. We just talked about how Central Michigan likes to play that the single high man-to-man -man coverage. The under further review. Notre Dame doing the same thing, and Central Michigan tries the deep crossing routes. It's a big-time throw and almost a great catch by Tyson Davis, but pretty obvious that ball came out. Still Notre Dame to take that roughing. Yeah, the Notre Dame crowd seeing this up on the big board and reacting accordingly. What a great effort. He almost snags it. Like Cam Hart was in perfect position playing that football. Impressive. He's even able to get that over his head. Sometimes when the defender runs up underneath that, the quarterback has to lay it over the top of that guy. And Jace Bauer, for a guy who hasn't played a lot of snaps, pretty darn good throw with touch on the deep over route. The play is going to come back, but they will get the benefit of the rough and the passer. The quarterback on a short week, not the starter a week ago. You like the plan, opening it up with him here early on, second drive. Again, a big part of what they're going to do is run the football, get the quarterback runs going, and, and oftentimes what that will result in is the defense wanting to play man-to-man -man coverage with a lot of people around the line of scrimmage. And that's when the play action game After comes alive. After review, the pass was incomplete. However, the 15 yard penalty for roughing the passer will be enforced from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You know, for Notre Dame, obviously they get the three and out on defense on the first drive. Four plays, 91 yards on their opening drive on offense, but then they kick the ball out of bounds and they get a roughing the passer. So the idea of playing the next play, the thing that all coaches preach, Marcus Freeman preaches, they got to maintain their concentration and their focus down in and down out. So Marion Lukes checks in a running back. And the tight end across the formation, dropping the pass once again, flipping out to Lukes, and Lukes has some space as he crosses the 40 down inside the 30-yard line. It's Ramon Henderson eventually making the tackle. Every one of these plays for Central Michigan is designed to neutralize the front of Notre Dame. Here's a quick swing screen out to Lukes. He's their space player. They got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly or Max protect. They're not going to be able to hold up against this Irish rush. Good mix by McElwain early in this ball game. It's a pickup of 16 down to the 29. Bauer, Gibbs, Lukes once again. You see some of the moves that he has. That great kickoff return for a touchdown. Hit that hole immediately. Took it all the way to the house, showed off his speed, his agility, and he's had some big games. Look back at Akron a year ago. Three touchdowns, 294 all-purpose yards in that one. Both Jalen Sneed and Jack Kaiser have a chance to 
Create a tackle for loss here. Luke showing a change of direction. Big game for the Chippewas. And Luke's in motion. They're going to run the quarterback and Jace Bauer. Nice hole opens up. He takes this inside the 15. Excellent response by Central Michigan to what's gone on in the early part of this ball game. And again, it's the same kind of thing. Take loops and put them in motion. Create another quarterback design run. They have the Irish off balance here on defense early on. Said that quarterback competition went all the way through fall camp between Jace Bauer, Bert Emanuel. They were high on him coming into the game. He's starting to show up. Hand it off. This is Luke's. It's one man miss. Takes it inside the tent. More nice running there by Marion Luke's. One thing's been impressive so far about Jace Bauer is his poise. One start coming into this ball game. Has not played a ton of football for Central Michigan. Did a good job directing this drive. Luke showing up, both as a receiver getting the ball out in space and running between the tackles. Bring Miles Bailey back into the game. They'll give it to Bailey, straight up the middle, and he's trying to break one tackle, able to, and into the end zone. Football comes out, though. That ball break the plane first. They're going to say, yes, it did, and touchdown Central Michigan. Impressive drive. Seven plays, 65 yards, and in for the score was Miles Bailey. Hey, hats off to the Central Michigan offense. Responding to the early adversity in this ball game, Notre Dame scores on four plays. Central Michigan says, hey, here we go. We're coming right back at you. Aided by that roughing the passer penalty early on. They got the great field position. And for the kickoff, went out of bounds. But they ran it. They threw it. They kept the quarterback clean. They got to go to one-two punch. Miles Bailey and Marion Luke, the M&M boys, coming up big for the Chippewas. They were lighting up that scoreboard a week ago as well as Kristen Matson comes on for the extra point, and that is right down the middle. 7-7. Seven, seven. You call them m and m There they are. That's the nickname they gave themselves. m and ms are flowing over there on the CMU sideline. All tied here midway through the first quarter. This week, Central Michigan players and staff would not answer many questions about Notre Dame. Receiver Chris Parker told me the focus is about us. Defensive back Dante Kent said the same thing. When I asked head coach Jim McElwain about Notre Dame, he said, when you watch them on film, they just have the shiniest helmets in the history of football. Then he told me, it's about us. <laughs> he sure did, Zor. He went on about those helmets for about <laughs> 10 minutes, didn't he? Couldn't get over it when he first turned the film back on. Is that gold leaf in those helmets? <laughs> It's good stuff, but you know, that mentality, I, I said this to you guys, that, that expression, it's about us, could be emblazoned on my forehead the number of times I've said it in life. And you, know, you certainly game plan, you watch the opponent, you know their strengths and weaknesses, but so much of football is playing at your best. And when you're Central Michigan coming in here at Notre Dame Stadium, it's an important message. And it seems like McElwain's message has gotten through to his team. And Tristan Matson's kick. That's into the end zone for the touchback. It's an Coach. impressive drive, though, by Central Michigan. The quick answer, Tobias Merriweather goes deep. He has a perfect throw there by Hartman to set up 7-0 lead for Notre Dame and then straight back down the field. And they were nervous about the fact that J.D. Bertrand was not going to be out there. I thought you asked you know, both head coach Marcus Freeman as well as Al Golden a great question. Who do you go talk to when things are not going well? The answer was pretty clear that it was Bertrand. No doubt. Bertrand and D.J. Brown in the back end, those are the two leaders, and not only leaders in production, but leaders in their communication. They get everybody lined up, and that was a big concern for the Irish defensive staff all week long. Hartman play action. Looking downfield. Protection is great. Now firing. There's all kinds of contact there. It's Rico Flores, the intended target. He was being grabbed. It's Elijah Ricard in coverage may be the guilty party.
I don't think there's any doubt it's pass interference. There's no foul on the play for pass interference. Incomplete <laughs> pass, second down. Wow. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. <laughs> Rico running across the field. <laughs> I don't know how the ref got talked out of that one because he hooked him, he grabbed him, he spun him. I don't know if he was calling the ball was uncatchable, but typically when you restrict the receiver like that, it becomes that much more uncatchable. <laughs> I would say Marcus Freeman in agreement. I think they Second missed one there, Jack. And 10. Flag came out, they picked it back up, and back to Hart, under center. Hand it off, Estime. Estime stopped up right there at the line and no room to gain. It's Jacquez Bristol, the best on the inside for the Chippewas making the stop. Like what Notre Dame offensive coordinator did on the first down play, they go hard play action, clean protection for Hartman, and they miss the throw or don't get the call. And now they come back with the run and the Chippewas are ready. And now Sam Hartman finds himself in the third and 10. Third and long, and Jeremiah Love checks in. Oh, third and nine, Hartman. Protected perfectly, now fires to the outside. It's Chris Tyree, and Tyree able to create some space to pick up that first down. The biggest mismatch in the game, Jack, is on the offense and defensive lines. And watch this protection by this Notre Dame offensive line. They're great individual protectors. They protect well as a unit. And Sam Hartman has so much poise and composure. He literally went through four guys in his protection before he found Tyree for the first down. Hartman back to the air. It's complete to Jaden Thomas. Hard to believe. Zero catches at NC State for Thomas. Four catches in the first two games of the year. Another first down throw. He get isolated coverage outside. Dante Kent, who was beat for the long touchdown by Merriweather early. Playing soft on Thomas. Sam Hartman taking advantage of it. So he's a boom or bust corner. The pass breakups, first in the FBS. The explosive plays allow, which he already has given one up to Merriweather. Second worst. Jabron Payne into the game at running back. Hartman fakes the ball to Payne. Now he's going to scramble with it as he crosses midfield. Three first down throws on this drive. They go play action again on first down. Central Michigan plays a lot of what we call single high coverage, one deep safety. Notre Dame trying to take advantage of it, but Central Michigan up for it on the back end. Good coverage, no place to throw it. Nice job by Sam Hartman making a play for with his feet, keeping Notre Dame on schedule. Hartman. Three of four, 98 yards, and a touchdown. Hand it off. Straight up the middle with Jabron Payne, and Payne takes it inside the 40. This is one of the deepest running back rooms you will find anywhere in college football. It is ridiculous. That time it's Payne's turn. It sure is, and this is becoming one of the signature plays for Notre Dame. It's a counter play where they pull the guard, they pull the backside tight end, and they give the ball to Payne. And one of the things you notice about Payne is his feel as a runner. Low center of gravity. He's a patient runner. He's always going north and south and finishing forward. They got a lot of backs coming at that defense. They're hard to stop. Bring Adric Estime back into the game. Hartman gives him the football. Back up the middle. Estime lowering that shoulder into the secondary. He's going to pick up another first down on this drive. Trey Jones eventually gets him on the ground. But Jack, sometimes when you're calling plays, you say, hey, they're playing this. So let, let's throw it because this will be favorable to throw it. If Notre Dame looks back at this game so far, when they've run the ball on first down, they've had a lot of success, <laughs> regardless of what defense Central Michigan is playing in. Keep giving the ball to number seven. Good things are happening for the Irish. And we got a player down for Central Michigan. That's Dante Kent who has been their best corner. We'll check on him. It's good to see Dante Kent back up on his feet. 
junior, key player, 27 career starts for him, and that is what happened at the conclusion of that Estime run. So much to like about Dante Kent as a player. He's a playmaker at that cornerback position. He's aggressive, he's around the ball. One thing he has to learn is to be more disciplined in his coverage. We saw Mary Merriweather run past him early for the touchdown. You have to be able to make plays without giving up bad plays, and that's one of the areas that he'll continue to grow the more he plays. That's Marcus Badgett checks into the game for Kent, and he is matched up on Jaden Thomas. Hartman. Pockets clean, taken all day. Al firing just throws this football out of bounds. Been really impressed with the coverage on the back end by Central Michigan. Three halfbacks in the ball game. Showing them a different look. Plenty of, plenty of time for Sam Hartman. He's working the right side. Thomas alone on the left side. Protection's been awfully impressive by this Notre Dame offensive line. Not a ton of places to throw the ball so far. Second and 10. Back to the ground game. This is Jeremiah Love. And Love is still trying to make his way for it. A hard guy to get on the ground. He's the fastest in that running back group. Feel like he just has a special ability. And get him at least 10 touches in each game. Jeremiah Love is really showing up here in the early part of this season for Notre Dame. He's a freshman out of St. Louis. And his quickness, speed, and acceleration jumps off the tape at you. But Jared Parker quick to say he can run inside too when he finishes runs. You got a glimpse of that right there. Back comes Estime giving the football. Estime is met and dropped. That is Kyle Moretti. Clear leader of that defense for Central Michigan. Sort of an old school looking linebacker. He's a big guy, 245 pounds. Nice play here. Been waiting for this collision all day. Audrey Gestime going against Moretti. <laughs> 230 pounds versus 245 pounds. And you said it, old school is the right description. Look at this guy. <laughs> That's an old school Mike linebacker if you've ever seen one. Rob Akey, their defensive coordinator, just went on and on talking about Moretti. And you see Jaquez Bristol making his way over to the sideline. He's a little shaken up after that play as well. Something that you hear coaches talk about a lot is the leadership on defense. The guy who gets everybody lined up. The guy who makes the adjustments. Moretti's the guy for Central Michigan. As you look at Rob Akey, the defensive coordinator, he just says he gets everybody squared away. It's under further review. He knows how to make the adjustments, not unlike JT Bertrand on the other side for Notre Dame. Those guys are invaluable beyond their production on the field. So these refs want to take one more look at that Estime run and see where that football ended up. I think they just want to see the hit again. <laughs> yeah, <I think> so. <laughs> you can hear it up here. Look at these guys. We got red lines, we got yellow lines. <laughs> sure look close. I'm not sure he got there. I don't think he's even close. It looks live like Moretti beat him to the spot. Let's bring in Terry McCauley. Our rules analyst, Terry, how do you see this one? Yeah, Jack, this is clearly short of the line to gain. He's, he's probably half a yard short when he's hit and driven back. His forward progress, like I said, half yard short. Uh, so they should reverse this one. The other part to this tackle is as good as Moretti is, Trey Jones, the safety, 6'2", 215 pounds. The field stands. First down. Wow. <laughs> They're not listening yeah, to us Jack, today, this is, <laughs> this is pretty stunning. I mean, you're looking at it right, pretty much right down the line, and the ball really isn't even close. You can see where the, the defender is. You have a, a, a pretty good idea of where the line to gain is because the defender, his rear end is basically on the line to gain. The runner never got there. It's pretty surprising. Notre Dame fans in this building, not too upset about that one, but also picked up that... Pass interference earlier on Rico Flores, so a couple of them here early. Yeah, but Terry will tell you that officials never make up calls. Do they, Terry? 
<laughs> like he may no, be going back absolutely over. Absolutely not. They do make mistakes. <laughs> they do make mistakes, but they, they don't make up calls. I think they've made two mistakes early. It should, well, have been, it should have been pass interference against Rico Flores, and this thing should not be a first down, and I think they're getting another look at it. Well, my hunch is they've gone back under the hood to, to correct it. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Let's hope they do, because he's clearly short. You're a pretty influential guy, Terry. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see the return to the replay very often. It's not even close. But Trey Jones makes a big hit there as well. It would have been fun to see Estime go against Moretti, mano a mano, but Trey Jones came in and knocked Estime back. I would be shocked if they didn't reverse this. The ruling on the field was the runner gained the first down. However, after further review, he was short of the line to gain by a half a yard. We will move the ball back. It will be fourth down. All right. So after all that, <laughs> Terry better, redeems Better himself. late than never, guys. Yeah, exactly as long right. as we get it right. I mean, we don't need to take that long. I, I understand that. But they did get it right in the end, and that is, that is pretty critical. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I don't think there's any decision here for Marcus Freeman. They're going for it on fourth down, and I'd bet on Estime getting it. Heavy formation. Not up in the shotgun. Football goes to Estime. Estime breaks the tackle and in for the touchdown. Tremendous blocks out front by Joe O and Pat Cooper. This can happen in short yardage situations when everybody's committed to the line of scrimmage in a fourth and inches situation. As soon as Estimate breaks the line of scrimmage, there's nobody left. No levels to the defense. Notre Dame wins up front. Estimate finds the hole. Quiets the crowd. 10 plays, 75 yards. A little over five minutes melt off the clock. And Notre Dame back up seven. Running the football quiets the game down. Audric Estime, the most important weapon for this Notre Dame Irish offense early on in this ball game. Finding the end zone. Yeah, from the world of John Wick comes a Peacock original set in the 1970s in New York. A young Winston Scott takes on the world's most dangerous hotel in the Continental. Three-part event begins streaming September 22nd, only on Peacock. For Estime, fifth rushing touchdown of the season. He's the bell cow for this Notre Dame fighting Irish offense. He quiets the game down for everybody. Awfully productive so far. Schrader's kick is caught by Lukes. And Lukes out across the 20. You take a look at that last drive by Central Michigan. Just love the variety. Bauer getting the ball out of his hands quickly to Luke's out in space. Running the ball with Luke's up inside. Tough physical runner. And then getting the ball to Bailey to get in the end zone. It's been a good mix of run and pass. They've neutralized this Notre Dame defensive front by getting the ball out, incorporating some quarterback runs. It's been good variety by Jim McElwain and Paul Petrino, their offensive coordinator. Late shift to spread out this formation for Jace Bauer. Handed off right up the middle to Miles Bailey. Irish run defense a little better here. I like how this Central Michigan game plan has evolved throughout. You said it, late shift, getting a wide formation, trying to lighten up the box, the area around the line of scrimmage to get some favorable numbers and run the ball that way. So there's been variety throughout on the first three drives for Central Michigan, trying to keep Notre Dame on their toes. Motion loops into the backfield. They're going to give him the football. Trying to gain the edge and unable to. 
Great play man out there by Devante Jean-Baptiste, the transfer from Ohio State, four years as a Buckeye. Eight career sacks, help him in the pass rush game and the run game too. And he's starting to show up more and more for Notre Dame. He's big, 6'5", he's 260, he's long, and he's very athletic. Maybe the most athletic defensive lineman Notre Dame has. Was a spot player, a key reserve at Ohio State. Starting at that true defensive end spot for the Irish, getting better and better every week. Third and seven. 0 for 1 on third down so far. Bow to the air. That throw hit right as he was trying to release the football. They're going to say it's incomplete. Once again, it's John Baptiste into the backfield making another play. John Baptiste is the left defensive end. We saw him chase down a run from behind. Now it's just straight pass rush. Coming around the end, gets a hold of Bauer's elbow and the ball goes down. Central Michigan likes the athleticism of their tackles. Braden swore out, but he's a young player technically. He was late getting to a set. John Baptiste took advantage. Jake Walworth able to get the punt away cleanly. That's Chris Tyree back deep to receive, and he lets this football bounce, and it's going to take a great bounce for Central Michigan as it rolls inside the 15. It was fun talking to Jim McElwain this week. You know, if you look at his career, started at Eastern Washington, but he was the offensive coordinator at Alabama. He was the head coach of the University of Florida. Now he's at Central Michigan. So he's played on both sides of these kinds of games. He's been the big school. He's also been the underdog coming into this game and understanding his mentality coming into it. The longer we can stay in this ball game, don't make too many big mistakes. Just try to keep competitive. The more you can do that, the more pressure you put on the team that's favored heavily in the ball game. They've done a nice job so far. Try the end around here. This is Thomas. Now Thomas with a nice cut. Takes it out across the 20. Big body wide receiver. Just hand it to him. Good to see the variety by Jared Parker, the offensive coordinator. They like Jaden Thomas. Just get him the ball. Easiest way to do that, run the fly sweep. And Thomas for a big guy. Stretching it. He's able to get the defense to run east and west and put his foot in the ground and go north and south. Good drive starter for the Irish. And yeah, whistles here at the end of the quarter. It's a seven-point Notre Dame lead. Nice drive by the Chippewas and then the answer by this Irish offense. Audric Estebe in for the score. And this look from above is brought to you by Walmart Plus. Another sellout crowd here in South Bend. Notre Dame up by seven. They've been running the football really great in that first quarter. Got them the lead. Yeah, hand the ball to number seven, Audric Estime. Uh, he's been their best offensive player so far. They control the line of scrimmage. They're stronger than Central Michigan on the line of scrimmage, getting the ball to Estime, and everything else comes off of that. The play-action game will continue to attack them down the field. So that's the mix. That's where it needs to start for Notre Dame going forward. That's where they have the mismatch. A little controversy there. Is it fourth and short? Is it a first down? <laughs> Maybe just give them the first down after that Estime run on fourth and short. And then for the score, he went. First and 10, Irish to begin the second quarter. Hand it off, try the middle of that Chippewa's defense once again with Jeremiah Love and no room for him to operate. Jason Williams, who is in for Robbie Stort, who's been one of their best on the inside, has been playing big in his absence. We had a good visit with Jared Parker yesterday talking about how they use all these different backs and you know he said they have personnel groupings with their name on it so the players coming in the ball game know what plays they're going to run they practice those plays all week long they got a lot of backs to try to use them Hardman looking deep downfield and he has Chris Tyree who runs underneath of it and in for the touchdown goes Tyree can't throw it any better Talk about using your backs. That's a former running back right there, Chris Tyree. 
part of the three-headed monster last year. They moved him to receiver. Week after week after week, he gets better. You see the feel that he has. You see the speed that he has. There was no safety help down the middle. Tyree working on Stepney in the slot. All by himself. Sam Hartman saw it. Delivered a strike. From Spencer Schrader for the extra point. And we asked Adric Esteve. We said, why those business-like handshakes after the touchdown? You just saw that business-like handshake with Chris Tyree. So that's just who he is. We call him Steez, style with ease, talking about their quarterback in Sam Hartman. You see, Tobias Merriweather was the inside receiver, and he attracted the attention of the single high safety. Sam Hartman moved that safety with his eyes. He gets the isolation of Tyree on Stepney. Lays the ball out there. No help over the top. Perfect throw. Great job by Tyree running through it. Sam Hartman making it look easy. Four for six, 174 yards, two touchdowns. Doesn't take many throws so far for Hartman to pull that off. Three plays, 87 yards, and then the 76-yard touchdown to Chris Tyree. They feel like he's been natural, though, making that transition over to the wide receiver spot. I mean, there were times a season ago where he was the best running back. He was the go-to running back in that backfield. You see how stacked it's become in that running back room. He goes out to wide receiver looking pretty darn good. I've been really impressed. And over the course of the first three-and-a-half ball game, you see him run a variety of routes, vertical routes, underneath routes, option routes. His transition's been awfully smooth. Shift brings three players across the formation. Bauer, play action, pressure in his face, and he's trying to escape and just get this football out of his hands, and he's able to. That's Thomas Harper. The Irish defense has been extremely high on playing that nickel spot, and they're forcing the pressure. Jack, sometimes when you evaluate a defense, you just say, who shows up a lot? Right. And Thomas Harper, through three and a half games, shows up as much as anybody on this defense. The transfer from Oklahoma State, he plays that nickel position. He's been an excellent cover guy. He's a good tackler. And when he blitzes, he gets home and gets around the quarterback, showing up again one more time. Brad Student adding to that experience in the secondary. and lucky just to dive on it once again it's thomas harper a clean run at bauer and he stuck him wow i am surprised bauer got up my goodness off the right side of the screen here there you see harper look at the acceleration of the quarterback Whoa. wow <laughs> That's what we heard all the way up here. The acceleration, the great pass rushes accelerate to the quarterback, and Thomas Harper did right there. Tell you what, something else. Here goes Bauer, trying to run for it, crosses the 20, and he is going to be stopped up by Marist Leofau. How about that hit? Well, I'm impressed with Bauer, I'll tell you that much. After taking that hit for him to get back up and have a quarterback run like that, you saw Harper see the whole thing unfold. There was motion in his face, and then he realized the quarterback has it, and no one's going to block me. Talk about initial quickness and acceleration. A big-time sack for the Irish. They're going to get the ball back again. And Jim McElwain is still trying to figure out how his quarterback took that shot. Walrath on the punt. Tyree lets the football roll, and it will go to the 34-yard line as Tyree now goes over there, he's getting blocked, ends up on the ground, that's white side. we got a piece of it. Wow. <laughs> Blind side to the front side, ball comes out, Thomas Harper showing up for the Irish. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Allstate, you're in good hands, and by Jersey Mike Subs, be a sub above. Great offensive line tradition, both these schools. First round pick since 2007 on the offensive line. Joe Staley, the great one for CMU. Eric Fisher as well. Zach Martin, Notre Dame, Ronnie Stanley, Quentin Nelson, Mike McGlinchey. And you gotta wonder, there's the next one, right? Joe Alt, I think 32 NFL teams would sign him today if given the opportunity. Yeah, no wonder in there. He is gonna be the Amen. next. 
great one. And each of those guys you mentioned beforehand, both at Central Michigan and Notre Dame, were some of the best players of their generation at their position in the NFL, and Alt's going to be that guy as well. On the roll, Hartman trying to get away from that rush. This peel back block there as Hartman's able to reach the sideline. He's being chased down by Maurice White. It's been interesting, a lot of first down throws for Notre Dame, trying to use the fact that they've run the ball so effectively. <laughs> Apsey gives Hartman a little bit of a fake. <laughs> Good decision by him. Sam was bracing for the hit. Hartman, quick pass to the outside. It's Rico Flores. I knew they wanted to get him the football today after talking with the coaching staff yesterday. Another one of those true freshman wide receivers trying to get him caught up a bit with Jaden Greathouse in the start he's had. Jack, we've talked about how many running backs Notre Dame has. They've got a ton of receivers, too. You think about Jaden Thomas and Merriweather showing up, Tyree. they got a couple freshmen, Flores, Jaden Greathouse, a number of different guys they can get the ball to. And they've done a really nice job incorporating them into all different personnel groups and trying to play to their strengths. Excellent work by... Jared Parker and the offensive staff getting everybody involved. Hand it off to Jadarian Price, and he will cross midfield for more of these great freshmen that keep showing up. Let's go down to Zora. Notre Dame's true freshmen have had a noticeable impact so far this season. We're talking running back Jeremiah Love, wideouts Jaden Greathouse, and Rico Flores Jr. Head coach Marcus Freeman gave a nod to director of recruiting Chad Bowden and his team. Freeman says it shows we are getting the right guys to come in and contribute. Jeremiah Love told me the coaches and upperclassmen made sure to spend extra time with the freshmen over the summer. Sure did. Fire this to the outside. This is Jaden Thomas, and he will pick up that first down, but... But Chad Bowden has a winning energy about him, able to spend a little time with him at practice. And what he told me is, I have the best recruiting head coach in the country. It's the best job in America. No doubt. And, and, and each of these guys, what's been most impressive is how smoothly they've transitioned. And Marcus Freeman credited the high school programs that came from Jaden Greathouse from Austin Westlake, played for Todd Dodge down there, one of the great high school coaches in the history of Texas high school football. And they're just advanced. They've done a lot of things. They understand concepts. They show up at Notre Dame, and they're ready to go. Hartman looking downfield, and he's going right back to Rico Flores. This time floats it over his head. But you look at Great House, and this was really one of the moments that caught the attention of the Notre Dame coaching staff. Junior year of high school, 236 yards, three touchdowns he had in the state championship game. And he was playing with Cade Klubnick, now the Clemson quarterback, all of a sudden, everybody looked up and went, who's that receiver? Now he's playing for Notre Dame, making a huge impact. He sure is. Hartman, protected well. Now he rolls. Floats this football toward the sideline. And just one final thought on those young receivers and those young running backs. In talking to offensive coordinator Jared Parker, something he said about all of them is they have no performance anxiety. You know, you can coach them hard. They accept the coaching and just go on. They never get into a shell. They never pout. They're confident. They feel like they belong. They're ready to go. They don't get anxious once the game starts. And if you have that quality, your chances of performing well are pretty high. Now third and ten. Devin Ford is in the game at running back. Hartman fires. He's looking for his tight end. It's Holden Stays who had that great game against NC State. Four catches, 115 yards, a couple of touchdowns. That time just dropped it. It's fourth and ten. It was a good peek at what Notre Dame was trying to do on offense. They had third and ten there. And if you saw Hartman go up there and he used some cadence, then everybody was looking over at the sidelines and they were getting a call as to what they wanted to get to based on the defense that Central Michigan was playing. They tried to get a throw to, to Stays to at least give them a more manageable field goal opportunity. He drops it. <laughs> and Schrader hit from 61 yards on Thursday's practice. Freeman said he had earned this opportunity and it comes up just short from 59. 
And remember that 54-yard kick he hit a week ago against NC State just before the weather delay to give Notre Dame the lead and the momentum. He hit a good ball, just a little short. So Marcus Freeman's trust in his kicker is strong. One for four on the year right now, but he's tried three kicks from 50 plus, and that 54 yarder last week was Notre Dame's record long. That was deep. Yeah, I really liked how Notre Dame handled that. Sam Hartman, he threw the ball underneath the chains to Stays and hoping just to get five or six more yards to make it a more manageable field goal. Stays drops the ball, and all of a sudden, Schrader's kicking a 59 yard field goal. So I think Notre Dame handled it the right way. It's tough when you're asked to make these 50-plus kicks all the time. Hopefully they'll get them a couple of gimmies here before this game is out. And this football right up the middle to Miles Bailey, and he is fighting forward. There's a couple. And again, one thing to keep an eye on for Notre Dame on defense is the emergence of the linebackers in Bertrand's absence. So a number of different guys are playing. Kaiser, 24, has emerged as the leader in there in the middle as the signal caller. Got to keep an eye on that as the game unfolds. Jalen Sneed checks in at linebacker as well for Notre Dame. Belief that he can turn into a star. Bauer steps up and this is complete. It's Jesse Pruitt, now Pruitt with a nice move. And he'll take it down to about the 35 yard line. One catch a week ago for a 32 yard score. The transfer from Wayne State. Pruitt's got some playmaking ability. You see it here. This is just a drag route underneath the defense, and it was a bunch set, so Cam Hart ha has him in coverage, but there's a lot of different people that Hart has to work his way through. A good catch by Pruitt. You can see that little wiggle and that little burst he has. Been a big touchdown catch last week. Pickup of 22 there for Pruitt. Now Bauer drops, just tries to float it out to his running back and able to get it complete. It's Miles Bailey with the grab. Thomas Harper coming up to make the hit, and a flag flies. I think you're getting a roughing the passer first penalty. Foul, roughing the passer defense, number 99. 15-yard penalty, first down. It's on Riley Mills. Riley Mills got there quickly, unblocked. One, two, three. It's a good call by the officials. The way they're protecting quarterbacks these days, you simply can't do that. And Mill is one of the strongest humans in America. <laughs> he puts, your hand, puts his hands on you at all. Bauer is the flying. result. One thing we know about Bauer, though, he can take a hit. <laughs> sure can. Central Michigan driving. Bauer fakes. Protected, protection breaks down. That football just floats out of his hands. That's Jack Kaiser there in his face. They're gonna rule this a fumble. It appears they will. Football now back outside the 30. It's Tyson Davis over there trying to get him the ball. As he was getting the ball out of his hand, it gets hit and the ball simply goes backwards. Throws it from the 29, goes yep. all the way back to the, to the 35. It's Kaiser. Causing the problems for Bauer. Now they find themselves in a second and long situation. Big thought process here is to think about field position first and maybe try to cut this thing in half with a high percentage throw. Second and 22. Back to the ground. Straight up the middle. Finding success is Miles Bailey. Takes it back inside the 20. Or cut it in half with a high percentage run. <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing wrong with it. Notre Dame rushing up the field. They're in a draw play inside. Impressed with these runners for Central Michigan. Both Miles Bailey and Marion Lukes, they make upfield cuts, they get north and south. It's a good game, they make a third manageable here. 0 for three on third down this far, giving themselves a chance there with that Bailey run. Third and eight. Bauer scans to the outside. He threw that football while the wide receiver, Chris Parker, was still in his break. You can tell in that situation that Bauer wanted to get the ball out of his hand. He was feeling some pressure, so get it out quickly. He just was 
was too quick. Timing is off. Isolated coverage outside, take a breath and put it on him. Field goal opportunity here for Central Michigan. This is Tristan Matson from 36 yards away. And Matson's kick is quickly drifting. You hear the crowd cheer. Wide left. So Central Michigan started to put together a little drive there. Helped out by some penalties. Get it down into the scoring area. And well to the left goes Tristan Matson. So Big Ten Saturday night has the West Lafayette tonight. Purdue takes on Syracuse. Coverage begins 7 Eastern on NBC. And Peacock, are you getting the tailgate cranked up? Up there in West Lafayette. The Notre Dame football after the Tristan Matson miss at that 47 yard game winner a week ago. That time wide left. Football goes to Price. Defenders in the backfield, he is dropped. That's Kyle Moretti making the play. Jack, if you go back to last week, 42-42, Central Michigan and University of New Hampshire. That guy right there, Tristan Matson, kicks the game winner was a walk-off. And then today, snap, hold, kick, it's clean. Pulls that thing to the left. Hartman, complete. This is Audric Estime. Penalty marker flies, though. And that is in the area of holding. Holding, offense, number 54. Half the distance to the goal, penalty, second down. It's on the right tackle, Blake Fisher. Blake Fisher right here on the right side. It's a good initial set, but he tries to jump set a little bit. Heldman's a relentless rusher for Central Michigan. Got a good get off there, and as Blake tried to jump set him, he lost that edge. That was a good call by the officials. Second and 23, Hartman to the air. Back to Merriweather. Tobias Merriweather caught the big touchdown earlier. Gonna help make this more manageable this time. Gain of 10. Yeah, going back to the kick by Tristan Matson. He kicks the game winner last week and then he misses one there. I love the reaction by Jim McElwain, his head coach when he comes over. You know, what do you tell the kicker when he misses? Do you holler at him? McElwain just kind of consults them what happened. They have a conversation, pats him on the helmet. Hey, we're going to need you as this thing unfolds. Keep going as a young kicker. Got to keep bolstering that confidence. Hartman, complete. This is Jaden Greyhouse with some slippery moves. Out across the 25, going to come up short and bring up a fourth down. Just really impressed with Sam Hartman, his decision making. You get in those third and long situations, that can be a recipe for, for turning the ball over. And he understands they're up by two touchdowns. He wants to make a first down as much as anybody, but if they're playing with depth and there's no place to throw it down the field, throw it underneath, see if you can go make a play. If not, punt the ball and play to your defense, showing his maturity there. First punt of the afternoon for Notre Dame, Bryce McPherson. Send it deep to Javarian Wimberly. And it's a beautiful punt, high punt with a spiral that drifts inside the 20 and play made right there at that spot. And I believe that was Jeremiah Love who they turned into a gunner. The terrific running back, make it Devin Ford. Another great running back, playing special teams and showing up. So Burt Emanuel, was out ill, didn't end up making the trip after his great game against New Hampshire. Jace Bauer gets the start today at quarterback, four for eight, 45 yards so far for the sophomore. Let's go down to Zora. 
Jace Bauer called his parents on Wednesday to tell them he was going to start at Notre Dame Stadium. His dad, Jeff, told me he's excited for his son, but what a tough first start to have this season. Jeff said Jace has worked so hard for this opportunity. Bauer's parents and his brother are here today. They drove six hours from Iowa, and they were coming even before they knew their son was going to start. You gotta love it, Zora. How about Jeff trying to get that great photo there on his own phone? Give this one to Luke's, and Luke's has some great wiggle as he now turns on the burners. Out across the 40, that football came out late. We're going to say he was down before he lost it. Christian Gray running him down. The Bauer family has to be proud of their son and brother so far in this ball game. He got pressure off the edge here. I'll tell you what, Luke's very good vision, good lateral quickness. The rush comes outside of him. He slips up underneath him. Good ball security at the end of the down, holding on to that thing. The ref's going to have a quick conversation here. For a first and ten. For a guy who hasn't played a lot of football, Jace Bauer is a lot of poise. You can see his ability as a runner. He's made good decisions so far, and he's shown his toughness. This is not easy. A little bit overmatched against his Irish defense. He's hanging in there. Three and a half minutes to play in this first half. Back to the ground game. More nice moves here for Marian Lukes. That'll help the quarterback get going. Yeah, no doubt. Being able to run the football, they run it different ways. You know, both Miles Bailey and Lukes have been productive so far. Quarterback runs have been mixed in, high percentage throws, and a couple three and outs in this ball game, but also a couple long drives for Central Michigan. Chase Bauer has command. Nice combination of that backfield of speed and power. Now Miles Bailey represents more of the power. Checks back in. And Tyson Davis in motion. Give the football to Bailey straight up the middle. And he is stopped up. Set up third down and short. You know, we touched on it earlier when the team is mismatched a little bit like Central Michigan is against Notre Dame. The big thing for them is to hang in there, keep fighting, keep battling, try to extend this thing as long as they can. 21-7, the end of the half here, they have an opportunity to drive and make it a one-score game going into halftime. And Jim McElwain talked about that's the recipe for beating a team like this on the road. Done a good job so far. There's Leah Fowl showing pressure. It's going to be Bauer faking the reverse, keeping himself, and pick up that first down. Nice run. They got an opportunity to cut this down to a one-score game. They can go down and get a touchdown here before halftime. Continuing to move the quarterback is so important. They faked the end around. They had an opportunity for the go route outside. It's a good decision by Bauer just to use his feet. Keep this drive alive. There's the athleticism of Jean Baptiste one more time, knocking him out of bounds. Now one for five on third down for CMU. From the pistol, Bauer fakes. Now he's going to complete this pass to his running back and Miles Bailey. A couple of Irish defenders need to make the play. That's Thomas Davis who got him on the ground. Make that Thomas Harper. It's a 14 point Irish lead. Coming up on the All State halftime report, Ahmed, Joshua, Matt, Michael, they're going to recap the first half. Mizzou, they pull out that thriller over Kansas State. Florida State, they're going to escape as well. Playing at Boston College. All that coming up at the half. Second and six, 125 to play in this first half. Bauer Got pressure him. takes a big hit and lets go of a great pass right down the seam. It's Tyson Davis who brings that football in. Jean Baptiste with the big shot on Bauer. Most important trait for a quarterback is toughness and Jace Bauer is showing it. Jean Baptiste Stares down the gun barrel, <laughs> stands in and makes a throw, running right up the seam. Tyson Davis 
He knew he had to throw. He had to hold on to it, and he delivered a strike. On the ball quickly. Bauer back to the air, floats one up into the air. Penalty marker flies as he's looking for Tyson Davis, Jaden Mickey over there in coverage. Pass interference, defense number seven. The ball spotted at the two yard line, automatic first down. Another good decision by Jace Bauer. He sees the single coverage outside. It's just a man-to-man -man fade route. As he comes out of the break, Jaden Mickey grabs Tyson Davis and draws the flag. Central Michigan knocking on the door at the two-yard line. First and goal. Going to keep it himself off the right side. He's battling towards that goal line. And they're going to say he's stopped up maybe a couple of inches shy of that touchdown. Dad can't believe it. The runner was short of the line to gain. The previous play is under further review. One of the best things the Central Michigan offense does is these quarterback design runs, and their starting quarterback, Bert Emanuel, is fantastic at it. Also one of Jace Bauer's strengths. He's a big physical guy, 6'3", he's 220 pounds. He gets low. Looks like he's continuing to drive. Hard to see if the knees go down. Boy, it's hard to determine. They said he was short. I don't know if there's enough evidence to overturn that. All right, Terry McCauley, how do you see this one? Uh, I know it's rare that Jason and I agree, but I, I see the same thing. His knee <laughs> yeah. does go down, but right. there is nothing indisputable that says the ball has, has crossed the plane before that knee goes down. This should stand. For, at least from the angles we've seen so far. It's a good, strong run. He's keeping the legs moving. You see yeah. his... Feet churning. Knee down there, ball awfully close. Yeah. We're looking we're for just, indisputable to overturn it, it right there. Exactly, and we're, we're not down the line. We're not exactly down the line, so I, I, I don't see how you can reverse in there. It, 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 it looks like it's likely it did, but it's just not indisputable from what we've seen so far. And this might be the best case scenario for Central Michigan, because you don't want to leave too much time. Review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Please reset the game clock to 46 seconds. At 46 seconds, Notre Dame has called timeout. Their first timeout of the half, 30-second timeout. You know what Marcus Freeman's trying to do is sure do. bang the timeout and give Sam Hartman another opportunity here. So it might be the best thing for Central Michigan and that was not scored a touchdown because Sam Hartman's been awfully good in two-minute situations so far this year. 46 seconds is a bag of chips for that guy. He has been near perfect in those situations. No doubt, so. These Hyundai players on the rise. So two minute drills this season, 14 of 17, 221 and three touchdowns. Can't do it any better. Yeah, three opportunities before the half in each of the first three games. And you said it, I mean, he goes right down the field like it's nothing. So Mark is trying to give him another opportunity and ideally for Central Michigan, they just want to score as this clock goes to 0-0. Zero, zero. Bauer, they try the quarterback sneak, penalty markers fly as he battles toward the end zone. I think they're moving before the snap. Yep. Been a lot of discussion before these calls, hasn't there? Sure has been. The penalties so far, Notre Dame four big ones, zero so far for CMU.
the ruling on the field, the runner was short of the goal line. However, offside defense, half the distance to the goal penalty will be second down. Please put 40 seconds on the game clock. It did not run on that play. 40 seconds, please. Thank you. It's Howard Cross early on that one. And again, really hard to tell <laughs> if the knee's down, where the ball is. It's become the favorite short yardage play in the land. Philadelphia Eagles have made it famous. The quarterback sneak push play. See if they go right back to it. Doing Bauer, the quarterback sneak once again. Trying to get that push. <laughs> Did he get it home? The refs just trying to find him as they come running onto the field. Clock is ticking. Short of the goal line once again. Rolling over the runner was short of the goal line. Will be third down. Notre Dame takes its second. Timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Just save all the time they can get. Interesting timeout by Marcus Freeman there. When you get down to 20 seconds, your opportunity to come back in a two minute situation. I don't know if they'll have a legit chance. Looked like the ball might have come out right at the snap. There's a scrum in there. Lost it right away. <laughs> Lucky does you get back on top of that thing. It truly is a rugby scrum, and when you have a lot of things going on, you're in a goal line formation, the stances by the offensive linemen are different, the defensive line is penetrating, you have this tight end motioning behind you, he's gonna push you. First things first, you gotta get the snap. Somehow Central Michigan maintained the possession. Goal line defense for Notre Dame, standing tall so far. Now third goal. They're going to bring in their bigger quarterback here. And Pate, let him keep it. Make that Bauer. So they had Pate leading the way for Bauer. We've seen him do that before. Comes into the game as a lead blocker. Instead, they let Bauer keep it. And in for the score he goes. We got a seven point game. Well, I like the approach by Central Michigan. You can get those goal line sets where you put all the big people in there or you can get back in the gun and open the thing up a little bit. You see Jalen Sneed coming off the edge right there. Pape, the backup quarterback, delivers a blow. And there's Jace Bauer. Quarterback run game for Central Michigan showing up one more time, getting in the end zone. It's a one score ball game. Brings in Tristan Matson for the extra point. Cut it to seven. And he's able to. 17 seconds remain in this first half. How about that drive right there? The CMU. It's brought to you by Above the Rest by Jersey Mike Subs. McElwain talked about continuing to fight. Just stay in the fight. Keep battling. Started with this run right here on first down. Finding some lanes inside. Bauer standing in, throwing a strike under pressure. You get a defensive pass interference on a fade route. Bauer one more time finds the end zone. We initially thought it was Pape, the backup quarterback, but it turns out it was Kiewikowski, the linebacker, both wearing number 12. And it looked like a linebacker delivering that blow. Sneed came off the edge. Kiewikowski was ready. Good cut up inside by Bauer. 21-14 Central Michigan. The Chippewas got to feel good after 30 minutes. And now an injury right here. For CMU, it's Jacob Booth heading slowly over toward the sideline. 
There's Kuwikowski on the right there. Jalen Sneed is free. It's a good block. Delivers the blow. Bauer does the rest. Good job by Central Michigan. Control the line of scrimmage, the penetration inside. That's not good news for them. Some block to lead the way. 21-14. Notre Dame just one timeout remaining. And this crowd has fallen silent. Matson in for the touchback. So with 17 seconds, not much time to operate here for Hartman. How do you play this? Yeah, not a lot of time. I can see them trying to throw a high percentage throw and see if they can make something happen here. Again, remember in college football, when you make a first down under two minutes, the clock will stop to get the ball reset. Looks like they're just going to take a knee. Take it into the break. 21-14, CMU has stunned Notre Dame Stadium with that drive. The first time not leading by 10 plus points at the half for the Fighting Irish. Heard the concern with J.D. Bertrand being out. Defense has struggled some. At the half, 21-14 Notre Dame lead. All-State halftime report is coming up after these messages. Let's go. This first half recap brought to you by GEICO. I'm on a mission now. Oh, you can't stop me now. To I'm on a mission now. Well, it was clear that Central Michigan believed making this trip up here to South Bend. Start of the third quarter, seven-point game as we look at our college football bulletin. And this Irish defense, it's been tough so far this year. Not really so far in this first half. They were concerned about J.D. Bertrand being out, D.J. Brown being out. You see some of the numbers, points allowed in the first three games in the first half. 10 points allowed today, 14. Key guys out, it's been showing up. Yeah, we talked to Marcus Freeman and Al Golden about it, and they were concerned. They were concerned that the leadership, J.D. Bertrand and D.J. Brown, they're the lead communicators, are the guys that everybody looks to to get everybody lined up. They were going to be out of the lineup, and could the other guys step up? It was less about production, more about leadership and communication and talking. And uh, at different times in the first half, Notre Dame's defense has been impressive, but at other times, Central Michigan has driven the ball. Scored two touchdowns, the one right before the half. Al Golden can't be happy. Christian Matson sends it deep to Devin Ford. And Ford out across the 25. Let's go down to Zora. Marcus Freeman was heated as he made his way into the locker room at halftime, taking some extra time to have an animated conversation with the referees about a few plays he think that they missed calls on. I asked, why fight for your team in that way? He said, because every play matters. He told me the defense is not playing clean right now. They have to eliminate the penalties and tackle better. For CMU, Coach Jim McElwain said, his team is playing hard, but even with the one-score game, he said, we're giving up too many big plays, and he wants to see Notre Dame earn it a little bit more. Zora, thank you very much. Sam Hartman out on the field for the first drive of this second half. Roderick Estime starts as the running back. Give goes to Estime. Been having all kinds of success so far. Up and over he goes and into the secondary. Out across the 45, Rocco Spindler out front leading the way. This has been a common theme for Notre Dame. Look at Spindler here. He's pulling around. When in doubt, give the ball to number seven. He quiets the game down. Notre Dame has an advantage up front and taking advantage of it. Good job by Jared Parker getting this Notre Dame offense started. He carries 67 in the touchdown so far for Estimate. Give it to him again. Another big hole opens up. And Estimate rumbles down inside the 45. Bristol 
eventually making the tackle. First down play, they run it left. Now they come back and they run it back to the right side. Pull the backside guard. It's Pat Coogan. Get Estime in behind it. Good example of a play there. They call that the power play, and it's really a straight, they call it an A-gap run, straight downhill. One more time, straight ahead. Pick up that first down with Dodrick Estime. Oftentimes when that guard pulls, the defense sees it as a play that's going to go to the perimeter of the offense, and here comes number seven. Right down the back of the center. It's a tough down for the defense. Estime checks out, bring in Jeremiah Love. Hartman, clean drop, protection's great. Fires downfield, and that pass is caught by Jaden Thomas. Inside the five. First and goal, Notre Dame. You see the offensive line dominate the run game. Now they dominate in the pass protection game. Anytime you throw the ball deep down the field, it starts with those guys up front. The protection is clean. The deep post by the outside receiver, Jaden Thomas. Excellent job going to get it. The inside receiver ate up the safety. The outside receiver had outside leverage on the corner. You take it to the post, that cornerback has no chance. Pickup of 39 there for Thomas. Now Estebe checks back in. Give it to him. Work in the middle. Still trying to keep those legs moving. Stops made by Maurice White. Sam Hartman is so good throwing the ball down the field. Completed a couple long ones already for touchdowns. Had a chance on a deep post there for the big explosive play. Hartman gives Estebe one more time. Battling towards that goal line. They're going to say he's stopped up inches short. That's hard to reverse that momentum. Sure is. Every time I see Estime run it, they list him at 230. He's all of that. Does an excellent job driving his legs, but a lot of white shirts to the party, and they're not letting him get in the end zone. We'll take another look at it on the field. See Williams inside. One more time, Trey Jones from the secondary. Moretti gets back in it. Kiewikowski pulling him back. All they can do to keep number seven out of the end zone. I don't want to pre be premature here, but again, I think this is a hard one to overturn. It's got a good view right down the goal line, but hard to see where the ball is. Terry, what do you think? Yeah, Jason, this is very similar to the other one. I, I think he scores, but we just don't have indisputable evidence uh, from any of the angles we've seen so far. We lose the ball. Uh, we, we don't even know exactly how far he got with it. This should stand as short. Trey Jones, a player that they really like. I think they might get invited to an NFL Stands camp. This call. Third down. Stick with that call on the field. Here's the big pass play here. If you, right here, this is Tyree inside. He runs up on the safety. And then a big post over the top by Jane Thomas. And as soon as Sam Hartman sees that safety jump on the underneath route, he knows where that ball is going. He gives Thomas a chance. Excellent job by Jane going to get it. Hartman, quarterback keeper, just going to try to go with the sneak and get it across for the touchdown. Sometimes just keep it easy. That's an important response by Notre Dame. Central Michigan does a great job making a one-score game before the half. Notre Dame comes out on their first possession. Run it, run it, throw it, run it. Make a big throw down the field. Get yourself in there close. Find a way to get it in the end zone. They had to do something to turn the momentum of this game back in their favor. They're a better football team. Got to start showing up. Good first drive for the Irish. Set up by that big catch by Jaden Thomas. Extra point. And Spencer Schrader is good. Seven plays, 74 yards, over three minutes off the clock. Thomas sets it up. Hartman pays it off. Back to a two-touchdown lead for Notre Dame. 
tomorrow. NFL Week 2 continues. Sunday Night Football to a tongue of our low. The Dolphins, great start for them. Take on Mac Jones and the Patriots. Coverage begins 7 Eastern with Football Night in America on NBC and Peacock. Tua threw for 466 against the Chargers the other day. That's something. <laughs> That's a big number. <laughs> a lot of people fired up about Herbert. I think Tua might have taken that personally. Yeah. I bet he doesn't throw for 466 this week against Coach Belichick. <laughs> we have a few schemes. 28-14. Nice drive put together to start the second half by Sam Hartman, Notre Dame. Estime with some carries. Thomas with a big catch. And the quarterback sneak to get the six. Six plus one for the seven. The Luke's content with the touchback. Notre Dame pass rush showing up here a little bit early on in this ball game. That's John Baptiste getting to Jace Bauer a couple times. They put Thomas Harper on the edge and just blitzed him. Causes the errant throw there. And then the big hit of the day. <laughs> when you're looking to the left and you get hit from the front side, that's as tough a hit as a quarterback will take. So the down guys are getting home, and when they're not getting home, Al Golden's dialing up some pressures. Been impressed with Jace Bauer, the quarterback for Central Michigan, how he's handled it all. It is Jace Bauer after that great drive to wrap up the first half. Bauer gives Miles Bailey, big hole opens up, and Bailey sprints into the secondary and takes it out across the 40 to the 44. Ramon Henderson eventually gets him on the ground. Gain of 19. Just right down the middle. They bring the tight end from the right-hand side back across, and he captures the eyes of the linebacker. And then Miles Bailey just runs north and south. He stays low, gets into it. Kaiser overruns it. Leah Fowles late getting there. Great drive starter for Central Michigan. Shift here right before the snap. This is going to be Bauer keeping it himself. Jay's Bauer. Pick up two, maybe three. Picked up two yards and ran into Riley Bill. When you're in a ball game like this and you're Central Michigan, you're just trying to stay in the fight. And one of the ways you can do it is just try to Run some complimentary plays. The first down play is you're working inside to Bailey, then you pull it this time by the quarterback. Just constantly try to stay a step ahead of the defense to keep them off balance. Malcolm Wayne, Petrino, and the staff has done a good job so far. Back from the pistol. Hand it off again. Penalty marker flies. That's Miles Bailey who picked up the first down. So we await the call. I think it's gonna be a hold inside. Not what Central Michigan holding, wants. Holding. Offense, number 63. 10-yard penalty, second down. It's on their center, Sarah Piglia. He's just right in the middle of the screen right here. <laughs> we talked about Moretti, the linebacker, being an old school guy. Sarah Piglia is the same thing. I guess I could see it. He's got the baggy pants and all. Yeah, you see that left hand? He's grabbing the shoulder pad of Power cross, not letting them get off. I think it's a good call. And Sarah Pigley's an old school guy, 6'1", 325. <laughs> Got the sleeves up, not afraid to show the guns. And that's the first CMU penalty this afternoon. Bauer, play action, deflected. Xavier Watts is rising there and got a hand on the football. Xavier Watts is another one of those guys who's been active for Notre Dame in the early part of the season, getting the starting role here. It's a good job reading the RPO, the run pass option. Once the quarterback pulls it, he stands there and knocks it away. Good instinctive play by Watts. Watts had that interception last week as well. Now third and 18. Bauer, quarterback draw. I take it straight back up the middle of that defense, and he crosses the 45-yard line to set up fourth down. That's Clarence Lewis who made the tackle. Notre Dame was ready for it. It was a play last week. Central Michigan's quarterback, Bert Emanuel, scored on a long touchdown run. Same situation. They motioned to empty. 
in a third long situation. They ran a quarterback draw, and there was nobody left. And trust me, Al Golden showed those guys that tape. You get third long, you never know what's going to happen. Notre Dame was all over it. Good job getting off the field. Jake Walrath on the punt, the transfer from Tarleton State, and Chris Tyree on the other end. Tyree steps up, ball drifts over his head and into the end zone for the touchback. Irish lead by 14, third quarter. Time now for Look From Above, brought to you by Walmart Plus. It's really about this Notre Dame offensive line. Their right guard, Rocco Spindler, pulling around, creating space for Audrey Gestime. And then the pass protection. When you want to throw the ball down the field, it starts with those guys up front. Comfortable pocket for Sam Hartman. Take them down into the low red zone. And they get down in there close. Alton Company push Central Michigan back. Giving Sam Hartman a chance to cross that goal line. So starts with the big guys up front, both the run game and the pass game. They've been dominant all day long. Hartman hands it away. Out with Estime. Shakes one defender loose. Gets it across the 20. And for Hartman, season high was 286 in pass yards against NC State today, 252. So far, hasn't always been able to play the entire game, though. He's been pulled from some second halves with some big leads. Yeah, Jack, the other part of this thing, it's 252 yards on 14 attempts, right? So the yards per attempt and how explosive they've been in the passing game has been really, really impressive. They're getting their money's worth. Hartman back to the air as Tobias Merriweather. He is taken out of bounds. It'll bring up a third and short. We talked at the outset the command that Sam Hartman has. And, you know, throughout this ball game, when he gets one-on-one -on -one coverage outside to Merriweather, he takes advantage of it. He gets it inside to Chris Tyree, takes advantage of it. Gets the post route to Jaden Thomas, takes advantage of it. So he's seeing the defense. He understands his pattern versus the coverage. He decisively takes it. And uh, he's made a lot of big plays for the Irish. Flip it out. Audrey Estime on a third two. Estime brings it. Penalty markers fly as Estime is flying down the sideline and in for the touchdown. He will go. CMU saying this is coming back. That was Holden Stays throwing the block. Holding offense number 13. 10 yard penalty. Third down. And they're going to get Stays with the hole. Trying to help Estime gain that corner. Here he is, hold stays right in the middle part of your screen there and getting an opportunity here on the edge. Once he gets that right hand on the outside pad of Trey Jones and he holds on, they're gonna call it every time. It's grab and restrict. Audrey Gestime <laughs> has been a dominant runner inside. He captures the edge and just runs away from the defense, but it's a good call by the official. You simply can't do it. Felt like people were overlooking a little bit, his ability to break loose. We saw that against NC State as well, coming out of that weather delay. Showing off the speed there. Now it's third and 10 following the hole. Hartman taking his time. Penalty marker flies once again as Hartman takes a hit, and he is slow back up to his feet. He's got a little limp to him. Holding, offense, number 50. Penalties decline, fourth down. So Rocco Spindler will make it fourth and 10. Spindler's the right guard right here. Protection's really been clean for Notre Dame all day long. There's a little bit of a twist. They call that a TE game. The defensive tackle goes out. The end loops inside. Spindler off balance as the end comes across. He just tackles the guy. It's a good call. Don't really like what's happened at the end of that down right there. Good to see Sam Hartman okay. Hartman made his way over to the sideline with a limp. And this part is caught right about the 40 and taken Back to the 45 by Wimberly. And 
And there is Hartman making his way slowly over to the Irish bench. So Sam Hartman just stood up off the bench. He's getting a lot of attention by the medical staff after that third and 10 where he was rolled up on late. This is Quindaria Lee, and, and he does a good job running over Rocco Spindler to get to the quarterback. But at the end of the down, this is bad ball. You know, he's down around Hartman's knees, and he kind of wrenches it and grabs it. Love to bring Terry in here. To me, that's that's roughing the passer. We put those rules in a long time ago to protect the quarterbacks in their lower body. Here's Bauer. Drops the pass and fires this football out of bounds. Tyson Davis, intended target. Terry, how do you see it? Yeah, Jack, Jason, it's not a foul for roughing the passer because in college football, the defender has to have an unabated path to the quarterback for it to be a foul for a low hit on the quarterback. He's clearly pulled down by the offensive lineman, so that takes off roughing the passer for a low hit on this play. Hmm. And he's got his helmet back on over there on the sideline. And this one off. This is Lutz. And he has stopped Donovan Heinisch as well as Watts in there making the tackle. The other thing to comment there is, you know, Sam Hartman, if you look at his pants, no knee pads on. It's like he's wearing shorts out there. And, you know, we talk a lot about player safety, and we have all the rules and equipment to protect guys, and sometimes the guys got to protect themselves too. So not a big fan of that look right there. Third down and eight. Bauer from an empty set. Across the middle it is bobbled and then eventually caught by Luke's Watts there in coverage. He's going to be stopped up about a yard short of that first down. Offense stays on the field. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt here for Jim McElwain. Four down territory going to go for it here. It's just over a yard. It's a long yard. The threat of this quarterback run in these situations. They've done a good job mixing things. Running the ball to the backs, getting the backs out in space on quick throws, but also the threat of the QB run with Bauer all have to be on the mind of the Notre Dame defense. They're bringing Kwiatkowski back into the game. Linebacker who's been used as a lead blocker. But with this quarterback sneak once again, it's Bauer with a little extra help, extra push behind him. They're going to pick up that first down. You know, we talked about that play earlier. It's that quarterback sneak where they're push him from behind and sometimes you line up in the formation sometimes you you motion a guy there and Marcus Young has been the guy for Central Michigan he gets right in behind Jace Bauer and kind of bear hugs him and just pushes him along and uh, it's a play I've been very popular in football here the last couple of years in those short yardage situations effective for Central Michigan Bauer to pass now he wants to run with it. Penalty markers fly once again, a couple of them. As Bauer is brought down with a pickup of six. It's going to be holding. Holding, offense, number 72. 10-yard penalty, first down. Time is the left guard, Klebzak. These are those penalties that are so hard for Central Michigan to overcome. They got a chance if they stay on schedule, make these third downs manageable. When they get behind the chains, first and 20 becomes that much harder. Don't be surprised to see a quarterback run or quarterback draw in these situations to try to get some of this back. Central Michigan, first and 20. So now first and 20. Bauer fakes. Protection's great, and oh. fires a great ball. It's brought in by Pruitt, who has made some big plays, had a grab in the first half, had a touchdown a week ago. He takes it inside the 20 for CMU. This is a play-action pass from the pistol formation, and this protection by the Central Michigan offensive line, awfully good. The receiver comes from all the way on the left-hand side. It's a deep over route. It takes time to do this. It's an excellent route by Pruitt, gaining depth and width as he goes. Jace Bauer lays the ball over the underneath coverage. A big time play for Central Michigan. 
And Jack Kaiser, you saw, slowly walking off after that play. Already thin at linebacker to death. Here's Jace Bauer on the roll. Bauer looking for the end zone. And this one too far. So you're already without J.D. Bertrand. Jack Kaiser's out. D.J. Brown is banged up. Getting a little thin defensively when you start looking at the leadership group. Yeah, sure are. And, and can't be more impressed with what Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator, and Jim McElwain have put together for Central Michigan. Notice that the quarterback is rarely just sitting in the pocket. If he's in the pocket, the ball comes out quickly. Typically, they're moving him. They're changing the launch point to try to neutralize this Notre Dame defensive front. It's been effective for him. Jalen Sneed in the game at linebacker. Bauer gives. Miles Bailey with the cut and takes it inside the 15. And Jack, this has been an, it was an issue for Notre Dame's defense last year. Red zone scoring. The opponent scored at a really high rate. Over 90% of the time, they scored touchdowns. Different this year. This Notre Dame defense has been awfully good down here, keeping opposing offenses out of the end zone. And now Golden has philosophy about playing max coverage or max pressure. We're going to see one or the other in this situation. Now a true freshman into the game at linebacker. Drake Bowen checks in. Third and seven. Looks like it's going to be pressure. Bauer drops, pressure's picked up. This pass is caught over the middle. It's Tyson Davis picks up that first down, working on Antonio Carter. Again, really impressed by Jace Bauer. Standing in there, protection. They're hanging in there. Pretty clean pocket for him. But just an underneath round, he stands in. Delivers a strike. Knocking on the door at the five yard line. First and goal. Bauer on the wall. Bauer has a target, falls incomplete. Coverage right there by Jalen Sneed. There's your max pressure. Pressure off the sides, and Central Michigan anticipated it. And again, they tried to move the quarterback. Keep him out of the pocket, try to take advantage of some man-to-man -man coverage. No place to throw it. And a late penalty marker comes out. There is no foul for an ineligible receiver downfield. Second down. We'll pick it up again. You see the pressure off the edges. It's going to be man coverage behind it. Again, move the pocket, stay away from that pressure. Bauer can't take advantage. Second and goal. Hand it off. Miles Bailey trying to gain that edge. Maris Leofal said no. Shoved him out of bounds. Big time play by Leofal there. And if you ask me what defensive player showed up as much as any on this Notre Dame defense throughout the season so far, it's that guy right there. Very effective as a blitzer and talk about going sideline to sideline. Leofow is healthy this year. He's got playmaking skills. A big time stop there, creating a third and goal from the five. Jack Kaiser checks back into the game for Notre Dame defensively. Heat, heat, more heat. Power way into that, pressure in his face. Floats one back in the end zone. This back pass falls incomplete. Coverage there by Benjamin Morrison. Tyson Davis is intended target. Jean Baptiste forced that pressure. Ball came out earlier than Bauer wanted it to. Al Golden likes to bring pressure. It's man to man, and it's a corner out. There's nobody left. If you're playing quarterback here, you say, hey, just give me a place to throw it and throw the ball into the corner of the end zone. You're working against Benjamin Morrison. If you leave the ball short and behind, he's going to make up the space. Big time coverage, one more time, Bauer standing in. Jean Baptiste right up under his chin. If he can get the ball more to the corner, be a great shot for Central Michigan to cash in on that drive. Tristan Matson this time is good from 23 yards away. So we will check on the health of Sam Hartman. Looks like he's ready to come back out on the field. Irish lead. So we will check on Sam Hartman. He's out on the field warming up just moments ago. 10 of 16, 258, 
couple of touchdowns on the game, was rolled up on during that last drive, the previous drive. Tristan Matson hit a field goal attempt. Three points on the board for Central Michigan. He sends this ball deep and over the head of Devin Ford. Zora was checking on Sam Hartman as he was getting some attention on the sideline. Sam Hartman walked slowly back to the bench after that last collision. He even had a little bit of a limp. He then sat down and started rubbing his left leg. The head athletic trainer came over to him, asked if he was okay, and he gave the all-good head nod. He takes his way back on the field now. Zora, thank you. And this was that hit. Just gets that front knee wrenched by Quindario Lee. And right at the end of it, he kind of turns. Good job spinning out of that thing so there's no serious damage. It looks like he's okay. Looks like he's moving around fine. Jadorian Price next to him at running back. Hartman drops. Firing down the sideline. Has a wide receiver. Rico Flores with the grab. And Flores down to the 35. <laughs> Looked all right on that throw. And look at that smile. Again, it starts with the protection up front. They've been clean all day long, and when he sees isolated coverage outside, that safety goes in the middle. The outside corner is going to be by himself. Excellent patience by Rico Flowers at the line of scrimmage. A big-time release. He keeps the route tight. Gives Sam Hartman plenty of room to throw the ball over that shoulder. Sam Hartman is as good a deep thrower I've seen in college football in a long, long time. Look at the 42 for Flores. Oh, try Price up the middle. Penalty marker in the air. Holding. Offense. Number 78. 10-yard penalty. First down. The time it's on. Pat Coogan, the left guard. The player down is Trey Jones. See Coogan here, the left guard. As the play unfolds and Williams splits the double team, you see that right hand just right in his chest plate. Didn't see what happened at the end of the down to Trey Jones. One of the real leaders on the Central Michigan defense, big physical safety. He's always around the line of scrimmage. Knocking people back. Hopefully he's okay. 300-yard passing day now for Hartman, but Trey Jones, Coach McElwain, one of the first names out of his mouth when talking about their defense. He's got that length, speed, thinks he could end up getting invited to an NFL camp. 6'2", 215-pound safety. But how about Hartman? 11 completions for 300 yards. It's hard to do that. <laughs> it's almost 30 yards of completion. Crazy. And oftentimes, as an offensive coach, will say after the game, oh, if we just hit that deep one, or just we had the guy there. That's not the case with Sam Hartman. When he gets him, he sees him, and he delivers strikes. Hartman flips it out to his running back, Love, and Love breaks the tackle. Now he's still running down the sideline, takes it down to the 32-yard line. He's got four completions of 38 or more, talking about Hartman. And again, he comes back with an efficient throw, spits it out wide to Love, and they call these guys running backs for reasons. Get the ball in their hands, and they're going to make something happen out in space. Love's a talented back. Hartman back to the air. He's looking for Jaden Greathouse you know, just over his intended target. Trey Jones back onto the field for the Chippewas. We've seen Sam Hartman as the quarterback for Notre Dame for about four games now, and that's really the first throw that I've seen him flat out miss. He had great house. He was the inside receiver running an outbreaking route. He had him. Sam read it. He was decisive. He just missed the throw. Devin Ford checks in at running back. Hartman standing tall in the pocket. And he's looking for great house one more time. High once again. Fourth and nine. Here comes our man Spencer Schrader. <laughs> Another one of these healthy kicks that he's going to kick. This is 50. So you see the throw one more time. Up until those last two throws, they've thrown the ball to Great House eight times this year for eight completions and three touchdowns. He missed on the corner route, and Sam was high on the over route, giving Schrader an opportunity. It's time from 50. Spencer Schrader. 
See that big leg of his once again, and he has it. Shake that baby in. Started out to the right and grew right back in there. Sometimes when you're a big leg kicker, the coach is putting you out there for all these long kicks. Sometimes you want a couple layups. Schrader made that one look like a layup. Snap hold kick, clean operation. It's a big three points for Notre Dame responding. It's funny, Freeman was saying that he told Brian Mason, of course, the prior special teams coach from Notre Dame, now with the Colts, he said, hey, he's, he hit one from 61 yards. 61 yards this week in practice. And Brian Mason said, yeah, that's cool. Just make sure he can hit from 35. <laughs> that's exactly right. Exactly right. But they put him out there because he's got the big leg. And as a head coach, you say, yeah, we'll give him a chance. And you know, sometimes you want to just get those singles. You want to get a couple base hits before you go for the long ball. And nice to see him get that opportunity there to knock it through, will continue to bolster his confidence. Didn't see Hartman have to take off and run or scramble around at all on that drive, but arm looked pretty good to start and winds up missing Great House a couple of times at the conclusion of that drive. Schrader send it deep. And a fair catch called for by Lukes. Take a look at Central Michigan on offense on their scoring drives, 198 yards, and the rest of the game only 54. They've had a few three and outs. On those five other drives, only 54 yards, but uh, they've shown that they're capable of moving the football. And I think they're, the all of playing Notre Dame has worn off a little bit. Jace Bauer has shown that he's comfortable playing in this environment, so I expect McElwain and Petrino to continue to mix things on offense, see if they get something going. Marion Lukes starts to drive a running back. Good this football to Lukes. Now he bounces it outside. Great moves by Lukes. So you get positive yardage. That's Cam Hart who shoved him out. Lukes has been impressive. That's what he does best, the ability to bounce and get to space. But he's shown us throughout this ball game that he's not afraid to run up inside between the tackles and finish runs in a physical manner. So these two backs, the m, &M boys, Miles Bailey and Marion Lukes, have been showing up and taking some pressure off our guy, Jace Bauer. That takes us to the end of the third quarter. Central Michigan hanging in there. Notre Dame fighting back. We got a good one in South Bend. And Ohio State up 21-10 right now on Western Kentucky. Give it to Lukes one more time, and he is spun down. Set up a third down. It's Jason Onye making the tackle. With injury, provides opportunities. Some different guys banged up on this Notre Dame defense. Number of other guys getting a chance to play. Onye showed up a little bit early on in the season, shows up again right there. Straight to third and six for Central Michigan. Some loops in motion, cleared out. Empty look for Bauer. Taking his time, pressure starting to arrive as Bauer fires this football down the sideline. Hit put on one more time by Jean Baptiste. He has been meeting Bauer often. Central Michigan goes to an empty alignment. You see Baptiste right here working inside. Man-to-man -man coverage outside. The coverage is winning on the back end. Baptiste and his defensive line buddies relentless in their pursuit of Bauer. Forcing the high throw. Jake Walworth back on to punt, and Chris Tyree steps underneath it. From the 29, here goes Tyree, and takes it out to the 39-yard line. Let's go down to Zora. Offensive coordinator Jared Parker told me Sam Hartman breeds confidence. Parker said people recognize Hartman's greatness, and they want a piece of it. 
What stands out to head coach Marcus Freeman is how ha how Hartman handles everything outside those white lines, like the leadership commitments and attention. Students will say he is always open to a selfie or saying hi around campus. The team respects their quarterback so much they gave him, a, him an official title. Jack, you touched on this. I asked Audrey Gestime the, about those professional handshakes that Sam gives. He said, yeah, that's just Steez, style and ease. You love that one, Jack. <laughs> Steez, and he's been showing off some toughness, too, after he was spun around and now back into the game. Flips this one to Audrey Estebe, and Estebe with a nice cut, and Estebe out across midfield. Makes your job a lot easier as a quarterback when you get out here. It's crack and pull. This is the old toss crack play, and when you can shoot it to a guy who's 230 pounds. Flip it out here quickly. This time it's Rico Flores. Quick completion, get the ball in the hands of Flores, and Flores get himself involved in this offense so far today. Just love what Jared Parker's doing. They just attack defenses different ways. They get the pitch to Estime outside, they throw it quick, now they're using tempo to get on the ball. This puts a different kind of pressure on the defense. Now it's Payne, and he's gonna be stopped a yard shy. Set up a third and one. Certainly four down territory here for Marcus Freeman, again, they're on the ball. Ball for 39. Wouldn't be surprised by an inside run here. Same looking play, but Payne is stopped in the backfield. It's Kyle Moretti, the leader of that defense from his linebacker spot, who stepped up to make the play. You see Moretti in the middle here, but there's also pressure off the edge. And they're going for this. Going fast. Here's Hartman up on the line. Hartman flips it out, and this is another completion to pick up that first down. It's Jaden Greathouse on fourth down. A great stop by Central Michigan on the third and one. Notre Dame says, that's all right, we'll just get back up on the ball. They go sprint right, create a little pick for a great house. Hartman on the money, keeping the drive alive. A price checks in. That running back flipped this ball to Jadarian Price. Breaks one tackle, now Price steps on that gas pedal and takes it inside the 25 down to about the 21 yard line. Home stays as well as Jaden Thomas leading the way for Price. Very similar play that we saw earlier with Estime, just a different formation. Four guys on the left-hand side of the formation. There's a bunch set. They block down on the bunch, they pull the tackle, they pull the guard, get people out in front. Jadarian Price, one of those running backs, doesn't get that many touches, but when he does, he certainly makes them count. And that's Nick Apsey who's getting some attention. We'll check on Apsey, be right back. The 2023 Rugby World Cup is underway on Peacock and CNBC. You can stream every single match in more than 100 hours of coverage live on Peacock. Look at touchdown Jesus as Nick Apsey needs some assistance to make his way into the tent over on the Chippewas sideline. Hartman under center, Audric Estime behind him. Nick Sherwood in motion. Give goes to Estime. And not much room to run there. Jaquez Bristol, Trey Jones, among others, make the stop. Justin Whiteside there, too. I love the mix that Notre Dame has on offense. This is old school. This is 13 personnel. One back, three tight ends, and they hammer the defense. You've seen them spread out, using empty sets, a variety of different things and ways that they can attack a defense, a, a blend of all the new, really makes it hard on Central Michigan. Hartman able to escape the rush, and then he is spun down right there as he's trying to just get rid of that football. And now Hartman slow back up to his feet once again. Quiet Kowski in there, forcing the pressure. And this creates a... We're in the area. Third down. Question about whether it was intentional grounding. 
there, but it creates a third and eight situation. And at different times in this ball game, Central Michigan on defense has stepped up. And, and typically Sam Hartman has been able to convert in these to keep these drives alive. You got to understand the situation. You're up by 14 with just under 11 minutes to go. Getting points here is big. Third and eight, Hartman. Fires quickly to the outside. It's Jaden Thomas, and Thomas tried to break a tackle and extend for that first down, unable to. Dante Kent over there in coverage and making the play. Ever since that long touchdown pass by Tobias Merriweather early on in the ball game, Dante Kent at corner has played off. You've seen Hartman go that way with underneath throws since that big play he made earlier. Good job by Kent coming up and making the tackle, keeping the Irish short. Spencer Schrader from 31. It's drifting to the left, but through. 34-17, Notre Dame. Thanks to Spencer Schrader. So Jim McElwain, the 2019 Mac Coach of the Year. He felt like he could bring this team in here and that they would fight. Thought they had an opportunity to make some noise in South Bend, and his team has hung in tough. The Irish with a 17-point lead after that field goal. And they have played without their starting quarterback and Bert Emanuel Jr. Jace Bauer got the start after the great game that Emanuel had a week ago, and they've kept this game tight. For McElwain and his road to Central Michigan, he has coached all over. Started in the Big Sky Conference out there, and then he bounced around, even a little stint with the Oakland Raiders. 2006, Alabama with Nick Saban until 2011. Got a head coaching opportunity there at Colorado State, and then went to Florida Gators until 17. Then he's the receiver coach at Michigan, and ultimately the head coach here at Central Michigan. Been all over. Max, a really good football coach, and he comes from out in the great Northwest. A lot of good coaches have come from there and they were kind of on the cutting edge of the passing game Offside. for a while. If you think about Dennis Erickson. That five yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. You think about Dennis Erickson, so many others out there in the Big Sky Conference. Had a good visit with, with Mac the other day and he said, you know, the Big Sky, we used to, you know, hang out afterwards. We'd get a napkin out and have all these different ideas about how we wanted to draw some plays up and we try him and we some would be good some wouldn't be good and you have a lot of failures but but nobody was watching us and you learn as you go and he said he carries so much of that with him in all his different stops and certainly done an awfully good job here at Central Michigan so far and Bauer hands this football off to Miles Bailey in a pick up four McElwain took over a team that had one win and he's had an eight win season a nine win season here he's gotten to on the ball game, so just a good football coach and building the program the right way. You know, he spent some time as the offensive coordinator down there at Alabama with Nick Saban, and you know, we asked him the other day what he learned from Coach Saban. He said, you know, it's really about working hard and being thorough in all aspects of your organization, and he said that's been a big takeaway for him, and it's really helped him a lot as he's built programs around this country. Second and six. This is a great play in the backfield here by Jason Onye. There they are, Coach right Saban, there. Coach McElwain. The big coach. <laughs> right. It's amazing that the coaching tree that Nick Saban has, the number of college coaches, guys who have been on his staff, gone on to lead programs around the country, McElwain being one of them, and uh, certainly has had a huge influence on college football, and, and Matt gives him a ton of credit for his growth and development as a head coach. I still keep in touch to this day. Third and six. Bauer fires, dangerous pass. It's broken up by Clarence Lewis. He was right there step for step and made the play. Fourth and six. I like the call. They go triple slant on the right side, and that's one of those throws for Jace Bauer. It's a good throw, but when you see Lewis coming in over the right shoulder of the defender, if somehow you could bury that throw, into the body of the receiver, Thomas Panunzio. When it's off the body like that, Lewis can come make a play and knock it out. 
Jake Walworth, high punt. Fair catch called by Chris Tyree. So it's 34-17, 17 point lead for Notre Dame. Sam Hartman is so impressive in so many ways, but not more than his ability to throw the deep ball. Again today, the, the go route to Tobias Merriweather, the inside seam route to Tyree. He just has an amazing ability to hold the safety and lay the ball out there to give his receivers a chance to go get it. Sam Hartman does not necessarily have the strongest arm, but he has as good a feel throwing the ball down the field as I've seen in college football in a long, long time on display again today. Here as goes Patrick <laughs> Estime right up the middle, hitting the Jets, taking it out to the 40. Talk about on display. There he is, Andrick Estime, right in the heart of the Central Michigan defense. He showed us his quickness, his speed. How about his hurdling ability? This guy is something else. It's a tremendous one-two combination with Hartman under center, throwing the ball deep, and Estime pounding away at the defense. That was Stepney. He went up and over, over 100 yards once again. Roderick Estime. Hartman flips it out. Estime takes the pitch, then cuts it back up inside and crosses midfield. It's Justin Whiteside who tracked him down. Just so impressed the more I watch Audric Estime play. His vision and feel as a runner, combined with sneaky quickness and speed to go along with all that power. And he's one of those guys, the more you give him the ball, the stronger he gets. He's an awfully good back. That's Jaquez Bristol. He's getting some extra attention. So we'll check on Bristol and step aside. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Give him a stall, man. Every what week. They for? What they pay for. Audric Estime had the mic on a pregame, and he has been going to work. 133 yards now on the ground. We had a great visit with him yesterday. He's smiling the entire time when you're talking about him. He's talking about his major off the field, his political science major, how much he loves studying at Notre Dame and then going to work on the field. He said, I take it serious. Every day in the classroom is the most important thing to me that I flip that switch and I go to work on the football field. I asked him, I said, Estime, you sitting in the front row raising your hand? He's like, nah, coach. Uh I sit in the second row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is always a good scene. <laughs> Wayne Cooper Flanagan in motion. Estime up the middle. One more hurdle for Estime. Now gas pedal inside the 10. He has got some speed. He's got some ups over Ricard that time. Hello. He's something else, and what a great feel. Oftentimes when you're a big back, these guys want to tackle you low, so you develop this ability to anticipate that and hurdle over them. Zeke Elliott used to do it with us in Dallas. Estime learning the skill, and that's a big man right there. He's north of 230 pounds to be able to do that on the move as fluidly as he does. Pretty darn impressive. I bet he's getting it on this one. Career high, 172 yard day for Estime. Hartman to the air. Looking for Jaden Thomas and over his head. Dante Kent in coverage. That's one of those run pass options where if you like to look outside, Jaden Thomas on Kent and man to man coverage, Sam's going to take it. It's a run play inside. They're all blocking the run. You like the matchup? Looked like Kent had some contact. One of the few throws that Hartman hasn't really given his receiver a chance. Usually he lays that ball up a little bit more. It was a little deep with that throw. Hard to do anything, just give it to Estime, isn't it? Yeah. Second and goal, why not? Here is Estime. Runs into a pile there at the five yard line, trying to push his way forward. They're gonna mark him at the four. Third and goal. Been impressed with Central Michigan just continuing to fight and continuing to battle. Overmatched in this ball game and 
usually over time the the big guys up front start to wear you out and we've seen some of that but they're not going away and that's what coach McIlwain was saying we're going to fight we're going to scratch we're going to battle for 60 minutes he's got to be proud of his group they've certainly done that and making this trip without their quarterback and Bert Emanuel Jr. as well. Let's go down to Zora for more on Estimate. Audrey Estimate knew he was making strides as a leader when his teammates started to follow his habits. He sprinted 70 yards into the end zone during a drill at practice. The next couple reps, he saw the four other running backs start to do the same thing. Freshman Jeremiah Love told me he has learned a lot from Estimate. One thing Estimate always says to the first year player is, the truth lies in the work. Sure does, and I, I thought it was really cool too. As you asked Estime right when he was leaving the meeting room about Chris Tyree and changing positions, he said, what, what do you miss most about Tyree? He said, Tyree always do everything about every play. So if you ever had a question, you asked Tyree. Now that he's not in the room, everybody's asking me those questions, so I got to have the answers now. And he does. He certainly does have the answers. And you can see his confidence grow every game that he plays. Just the way he not only runs, but how he protects, catches the ball out of the backfield. He's really become a complete back for the Irish. Third goal, Hartman to pass. Hartman looking for his tight end, Holmes stays. He's got another touchdown. Touchdown, Notre Dame. That's four receiving touchdowns for Stays here the last three weeks that we've seen him down here in the red zone catch that same kind of ball. It's just a drag route. And I want you to watch the throw by Hartman. It's man-to-man -man coverage on Moretti, and he has to get the ball way out in front. He certainly does, and Stays just plucks it with one hand. It's a big-time throw and catch. You see the receiving skills by number 13. Pretty darn good. Schrader's extra point is good. What has been Estebe going airborne? Nobody does it better. You want to go low, you might pay for it. <laughs> Estebe up and over. That's as clean as a one-handed grab as you're ever going to find by States. So it's a workout over there in the student section. 40-plus points, five straight games. That's a school record. Jared Parker, the new offensive coordinator, coming in. But these four have been looking pretty darn good. They sure have. And, you know, they've played three of the four opponents they should beat, but they've come in and they've done what they're supposed to do. And they've been a balanced offense. They attack different ways. They're using a variety of running backs. They're throwing the ball to a variety of receivers. They've gotten their tight ends involved. And that guy right there is running the show. And he has a tremendous command of this offense and what the coaches want to accomplish. They've been awfully good. And of course, Michael Mayer gone to the NFL, so they're looking for that next great tight end. And Holmes stays, the true sophomore. He says his dad is 6'6", his mom's a gymnast. He felt like he got his athleticism from his mom. But ever since we've been watching practice going back to last year, he just made play after play. And the way he runs for a guy his size, 6'5", 242, it's pretty smooth. It sure is. It's great to see him bringing that ability and that performance to the game. Four, four touchdown catches the last three weeks. They're pretty well productive. Bauer on the roll and has a completion out to Temple. And then for Central Michigan, you got to look back on this ball game and say, hey, we hung in there. There's a lot of good things that we've done. We've competed. We've battled. And we talked to Jim McElwain about, you know, NIL. Is NIL part of your program? And he said, well, not really. He said, you know, the MVP of the game gets a couple slices of <laughs> extra slices of meat <laughs> yeah. from, from the deli down at the corner. And, uh, you know, so they understand they're, they're a little bit mismatched here, but a lot of good things they can take away from it. Bauer gives. This is Luke's. And now Luke's is stopped by Jason Onye. Got a couple nice tackles defensively. And that's always what you're evaluating as a coach is how they play. I mean, at some point when you're watching the tape of this game on both sides, you're not looking at what the score is. You're watching how an individual player executes on a particular play. And uh, a lot of young guys getting an opportunity to play now for Notre Dame. For the Central Michigan side, you just want to see how your team responds. They continue to scratch and claw for 60 minutes, and I think they have done that. 
third and three. Bauer keeps, and there is no room for him to run. He stopped right there at the line of scrimmage. That's Jack Kaiser who stepped up to meet him, bring up fourth down. These are always interesting when the game's out of reach here, 41-17, and you're backed up. You're on the minus 32-yard line. It's fourth and four, and you're always thinking about, hey, should we go for it? Or at the end, we're going to punt in this situation, and we might get a chance to see Steve Angeli on the other side for Notre Dame, get a little mop-up duty. And, of course, the schedule gets a whole lot realer from here. Ohio State Buckeyes making their way in here. Clemson down the line. Duke, USC, and how good they've looked with Caleb Williams. High punt here. And Chris Tyree, as he's falling down, steps underneath it and calls the fair catch. So that coming up, and of course, Sam Hartman, as he was spun down there, and you have Ohio State, the Buckeyes coming in, number six, gonna play against number nine, Notre Dame. It's gonna be a terrific matchup in prime time. But any concern with Hartman, came back in looking pretty good with his arm, but we really didn't see him scramble around and use his legs much after that little moment of getting shaken up. We did not, but he has a good look on his face. So I would suspect uh, that Leg is not an issue for him going forward, but there's a lot of excitement here. Notre Dame facing Ohio State in the stadium next Saturday night. And, you know, Notre Dame has handled these first four games really well. The only real test was North Carolina State. They went down there and took care of business. They've beaten the three other opponents they should handle, Navy, Tennessee State, and Central Michigan. They've done what they're supposed to do. So they're primed and ready to go. Hopefully they'll get a couple of their guys on defense back and they'll be at full strength because the Buckeyes will be a challenge. Steve Angeli getting some reps here, hands it off to Jeremiah Love. And he is stopped before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. What matchup are you looking forward to most as you look at that game coming up next week and some of the great DBs and corners against some terrific wide receivers on the side of the Buckeyes? Well, what's been interesting for me through the early part of this this season for Notre Dame is they've been dominant on the offensive line against every opponent they have. So I think that will be neutralized a little bit more in Ohio State. Those matchups will be pretty even. But you look outside, Benjamin Morrison, as good a young corner as there is in college football against Morgan Harrison Jr., who is just something else. Setting up the screen here, that's Devin Ford. It's nice just to see him back out there. He took that big hit on a kickoff return earlier in the season. First game back for him, kickoff returner, running back as well, the transfer from Penn State, and he picks up that first down. Good look at it here. It's good to get Angeli some snaps here. They go across the ball screen, the back of lines on the right, goes back to the left, sometimes hides a little bit. Good to get Angeli a completion and get some confidence. But, you know, back to Marvin Harris, and this guy is something else. And you think about all the great receivers Ohio State has produced in recent years. Everyone seems to think that he might be the best of all of them. So it'll be a heck of a matchup for Benjamin Morris and then this Notre Dame secondary to try to quiet him down a little bit. Now this is Chase Ketterer getting a carry. And the energy and the juice in this building next Saturday night is going to be like none other. And don't think that guy right there, Audric Estime, is not going to be a big part of that game plan. And with all the great running backs they have, you really saw it today. This is his backfield. He is the featured guy. We saw it against NC State. Remember, he had the hot dog. He said, I saw the offensive line having some hot dogs. I grabbed one. I grabbed two hot dogs. Then he takes those hot dogs 80 yards to the house coming out of that long weather delay. And he has just been terrific following it up with this game against Central Michigan. Now back to the ground. 60 seconds to play. That's Skip Bellotta. And, that, and that's, why, a that's why if you're a Notre Dame fan, you got to feel good. You, you, you have a complete football team. you got veteran leadership on defense, and you're going to hopefully get a couple guys back so you'll be at full strength and offensively control the line of scrimmage. You can run the football. 
Not many quarterbacks playing as well as Sam Hartman right now. They have different weapons at the receiver position, the running back position. So there's a lot for this Ohio State defense and this Ohio State team to deal with. It'll be a heck of a challenge for the Irish. Certainly we must see TV. Forty-one seventeen. So a little test with that late drive by Central Michigan. Scored a touchdown right before halftime, and saw Marcus Freeman fired up going in, letting the refs have it a little bit, and his team came out and responded in this second half in a big way. They sure did. They took care of business like they needed to today. Jim McElwain's got to feel good about him, how his team has performed, but through four weeks, Marcus Freeman has to feel great about the growth and development of his program at Notre Dame. 4-0, taking care of business, beating the teams they're supposed to beat. And now next week at Ohio State, it's as good as it gets. Let's go down to Zora. Stand by with head coach, Marcus Freeman. Coaches, was a one-score game at halftime. How did your team respond when you challenged them to clean it up? You know, I think they did a, a pretty good job. It wasn't perfect. And, and as I told them, you know, we can't keep beating Notre Dame, right? And, and a lot of those self-inflicted wounds, and it wasn't perfect the second half. And what you saw is when we had some of those penalties, the results weren't what we wanted. But um, the majority of the second half was much cleaner and um, proud of the way they finished. Sam Hartman now leads the FBS in touchdown passes for this season. How did he persevere today? You know, I think, again, the experience he has, man, he's he's unshakable, man. He, he took a couple hits. Um, you know, maybe he threw a couple balls that weren't weren't where he wanted them to be, but he is a uh, just an experienced football player that's really, man, it just stays in the moment. I'm proud of him. Now to Audric Estime, had a career high in rushing yards. So many times we talk about him as a bruiser. Why is he so much more than that? <laughs> He's a bruiser, man. He is a bruiser. But uh, you know, shoot, the one long run he had that got called back, man. You see he's got some speed to him and uh, he claims to be one of the fastest yeah, on the team. I don't know, man. It's pretty good to see him though. You mentioned staying in the moment. You charge your players to do that. How did you do with that, knowing that your alma mater, Ohio State, is on the schedule next week? You know, it's, it's a great reminder that, that when you start thinking about things in the future or, or things in the past, like, it doesn't help you have success now. And uh, that was every time my mind went somewhere else or our players' minds went somewhere else, we came back into the moment. And that was to prepare for this team. This is a good football team. And so um, it's officially Ohio State week. Uh, you know, and we're going to celebrate this because this was a good win. And uh, you have to appreciate it, but it's time to turn the page. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, Zora, Coach, thank you very much. Hoping he gets his defensive leader back as well and J.D. Bertrand, and all signs are that he will be back. D.J. Brown, good to see Jack Kaiser make his way back into this game after he was shaken up. And the team is set for the alma mater. Six, 331, three touchdowns for him. Estime, a massive day. 20 carries, 176 yards, and a touchdown for him as well. Big week coming up. Ohio State and Notre Dame. So Notre Dame, they're going to return to South Bend next week, take on number six, Ohio State Buckeyes, NBC, and Peacock. Coverage begins with college football countdown at 7 Eastern. College football coverage continues. Number eight, Washington taking on Michigan State here on Peacock. And coming up tonight, Big Ten Saturday night, Purdue, the Boilermakers take on Syracuse. Coverage begins NBC and Peacock at 7 Eastern. For Jason Garrett, Zora Stevenson, I'm Jack Collinsworth. Thanks for watching Notre Dame football.